Hey kids, have you ever had to carry something very heavy? It might not be too bad for a minute, but the longer you carry it, the heavier it starts to feel. It can be like your backpack. You have to bring home your math book. It's kind of heavy, but you can manage. But then you remember that you need to study for your history test. So you pack your history book into your backpack too. Then you remember that you have that science project due, so you add your science book to the bag. And that book that you need to complete that reading assignment, you add that too. Then you gotta pack up your lunchbox, and your friend lent you that game that you wanted to borrow, and you don't wanna be thirsty on the way home, so you fill up your water bottle. <laughs> Yikes! That's one heavy backpack. That is going to be so hard to carry. You know, sometimes our worry can feel heavy too. We can worry about that math test coming up and if we are going to make the soccer team. We worry about our families that's fighting or a family member that's sick. But man, you failed that spelling test last week and you worry about the next one and if your parents are going to be mad if you fail again. You might worry about that library book that is due that you just can't seem to find anywhere. And you're hoping you didn't lose it on the bus. That's a lot of worry. And all those worries start to weigh us down. Jesus understands because he has been there. Let's see what he did when he knew something difficult was about to happen. Our story today can be found in Matthew 26, verses 36 through 56. Mark 14, verses 32 through 52. Luke 22, verses 40 through 53. And John 18, verses 1 through 11. After three years of performing miracles and teaching people about the kingdom of God, Jesus knew that his time on earth was coming to an end. So late one night, Jesus took his disciples to a place called the Garden of Gethsemane to prepare for the long, hard days ahead of them. When they got to the garden, Jesus invited three of his disciples, Peter, James and John to walk with him to a different part of the garden. Jesus was starting to feel sad and troubled, so he wanted his three closest friends to sit and pray with him. When Jesus got to where he was going, he dropped to his knees in the darkness and prayed out to God, My Father, if it is possible, take this cup of suffering from me. But let what you want be done, not what I want. That was Jesus' way of saying that he didn't want to have to die on the cross, but he would do it if that's what God wanted. When Jesus had finished his prayer, he looked up and found Peter, James, and John had fallen asleep. So he woke them up and said, can't you stay awake for even one hour? Keep watching and pray with me. So they did, but not for long. For a second time, Jesus prayed that God would spare him from the pain and suffering. And for a second time, the three disciples fell fast asleep. They were so tired that they couldn't keep their eyes open. After praying a third time, Jesus woke the disciples up again and said, Look, the time has come for me to be arrested. Get up, let's go. Just then, Judas, who had claimed to be a follower of Jesus and one of his disciples, walked up to Jesus with a crowd of people. The people were carrying swords and clubs and they didn't look too friendly. They had been sent to arrest Jesus for saying that he was the son of God, even though it was the truth. And to make things worse, 
It was Judas who had betrayed Jesus for just 30 pieces of silver. Ahead of time, Judas had arranged a signal with the crowd of people. He said, the one I kiss is the man you're looking for. Arrest him. As soon as Judas saw Jesus, he went up to him, kissed him on the cheek. This was the signal the crowd had been looking for. They immediately rushed to arrest Jesus. Jesus knew what was coming. He knew it would be hard and even painful. Jesus was fully God, but also fully human. No human wants to endure that kind of pain physically or emotionally. But Jesus prayed that God's will be done. He loved us so much and was willing to obey his Father's plan to save us if there was no other way. And there wasn't. Now, none of us will ever have to worry about or carry the weight of dying on a cross for the sins of the world. But I know you guys have things you worry about. Imagine every worry as a rock that you're adding to your backpack. It just keeps getting heavier. We can't bear the weight of it. There is an answer to this problem in our memory verse from 1 Peter 5, 7. Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. We can place all of our cares, our worries and fears on God because he cares for us. We can pray to God knowing he wants to bear our burdens for us. When we trust that his plan is perfect, we can relieve some of our weight by placing it on God. He is bigger and stronger than our worries and he can bear them for us if we give them to him. <laughs>